is pollen tube in the style. When the pollen plants start germinating the pollen tube, the pollen tube enters into the style through the stigma. The pollen tube enters into the style through the stigmatic region to reach the embryo sac. The growth of the pollen tube in the style depends upon the type of a style. The type of style, there are three types of styles are there. One is a hollow style, hollow style or open style, solid style or closed style and a semi-solid style that is half closed style. Hollow style, the hollow style is commonly present in monocots. It's running from the stigma at the base of the style. In this style region, a canal is lined by a single layer of a canal is lined by a single layer of a glandular canal cells that is transmitting cells. They secrete a mucilaginous substance. This mucilaginous substance attracts the pollen tube towards the style. The pollen tube grows on the surface of the cell lining the cell style or canal. The canal is filled with the secretion which serves as a nutrition for growing pollen tube. The canal is filled with the secretion which is used as a food for the developing pollen tube and also controls incompatibility reaction between the stale and the pollen tube. The secretion contains the secretion contains a lipid carbohydrates, enzymes like esters, acid phosphatase and also it contains the protein, the controlling sexual incompatibility. The next type of style is solid style or closed style. It is common in dicot. The closed style is seen in dicots. It contains the presence of central core of elongated highly specialized cells called transmitting tissue. It is equal to the lining cells of hollow style and also doing the same function. It is used as a nutritive tissue for the developing pollen tuber. It contains are also similar to that of the hollow style. The pollen tube grows through the intercellular spaces of the transmitting tissue. The pollen tubes grow through the intercellular spaces of the transmitting tissue. Then the last type of style is a semi-solid style or half-closed style. This style is intermediate between both types that is solid style and also open style. There are different opinions of on the nature of transmitting tissue present in the semi-solid style type, some authors consider that it is found only in the solid style, while the other consider that the lining of the cells of hollow style also has transmitting tissue. So when the pollen falls into the stigma of the flower, it starts growing the pollen tube and the pollen tube enters into the micropyle by means of a styla region. So the entry of the pollen tube into the ovulus takes place by three ways. One is porogamy, chalasogamy and mesogamy. Porogamy, chalasogamy and mesogamy. Porogamy. When the pollen tube enters into the enters into the embryo sac through the micropyle through the opening of the ovule is called as a porogamy chalasogamy the entry of the pollen tube by means of a chalasa into the embryo sac is called as a chalasogamy the entry of the pollen tube through the integument that is the coating covering layer of the ovule is called as a mesogamy so that is the entry of pollen tube into the ovulus takes place by three way that is porogamy through the micropylar region, chalasogamy by means of chalasa the pollen tube enters into the ovule 
or mesogamy. Mesogamy type, the pollen tube enters through the integument. The outer coating layer is used for the pollen tube enters into the ovule. Then the next topic is entry of pollen tube into the embryo sac. The, the, the pollen tube reaches into the ovule through either by porogamy or by chalasogamy or by mesogamy. It enters the embryo sac and through the micropylar end. The pollen enters into the embryo sac directly into the one of the synergies. The pollen tube enters the embryo sac directly into one of the synergies. The growth of the pollen tube towards the ovary, ovule and embryo sac is due to the presence of chemotrophic substance. Chemotrophic means the chemical substance which is produced by the ovary part is used to attract the pollen tube towards the embryo sac. The pollen tube after traveling the whole length of the stylar enters into the ovary locus where it is guided through the micropyle, through that micropyle region it enters into the embryo sac. By a structure is called as abutrator. Abutrators are the structure present near the micropyle of each ovule. It is an outgrowth of the placenta. Important in nourishing and guiding the pollen tube to the micropyle. Abutrators are a structure which are present in the ovary near the micropyle of each ovule. It is an outgrowth of uh, the placenta. It is important for the nourishing and guiding the pollen tube to the micropyle. After reaching the embryo sac, a pore is formed in the pollen tube wall at its apex at behind just behind the apex a pore is formed with its apex of the pollen tube and just behind the apex the content of the pollen tube has two main the content of the pollen tube has two main gametes and the vegetative nucleus the vegetative nucleus and cytoplasm are discharged into the synergies into which the pollen tube enters through which the pollen tube enter the pollen tube does not grow beyond it into the embryo sac. The tube nucleus is disorganizes. The next topic is double fertilization and triple fusion. S.G. Nostin and Gardner in the year 1898 and 1999 observed in lilium and fritillaria that both the male gametes are involved in fertilization. Both the male gametes are released from a male gametophyte are involved in the fertilization. The fertilize two different components present in the embryo sac. Since the both the male gametes are involved in fertilization, so it is called as a double fertilization. And it is an unique future in angiosperm. The double fertilization is an NEQ future in angiosperm. Among the two male gamete, among the two male gamete, one of the male gamete is fuses with the egg to form zygote, that is embryo, later develop into embryo. One of the male gamete is fuses with the egg. The male gamete carries haploid set of chromosomes and the egg carries haploid set of chromosomes. When both the haploid are fused together to form a diploid zygote, the zygote latter develops into an embryo structure. Another male gamete, which carries haploid set of chromosomes, is fused with the secondary nucleus or polar nucleus, which contains diploid set of chromosomes, fused together to form an endosperm, which carries triploid set of uh, N chromosomes. So the Zygote carries diploid chromosomes and the endosperm carries triploid number of chromosomes. Here, in endosperm, the haploid male gamete is fused with the diploid polar nucleus, so it is called as a triple fusion. 
the endosperm is used as a nutritive tissue for the developing embryo. After fertilization, the changes occur in the structure is called as a post fertilization structures and events. After fertilization, the seven changes occur in the floral parts up to the formation of the seed. The events of the fertilization are the endosperm, embryo development, formation of seeds and fruits are called as a post fertilization changes. After fertilization, the post fertilization changes are the sepals, petals, stamen and stigma uh, are usually wither and fall off. The ovary part is fertilized into fruit. The ovule is seed. The egg becomes a zygote. The funicle, the stalk of the ovule is converted into stalk of the seed. The micropyle that is opening in the ovule is micropyle of the seed which is used for the facilitates oxygen and water uptake. The new cell is present in the uh, ovary is converted into perisperm. The outer integument of the ovule is testa that is outer seed coat layer. The inner integument is stigma that is inner seed coat. Synergic cells are mostly degenerated. The secondary nucleus is a converted into endosperm, the antipodal cells are also degenerated. These are the sum of the post fertilization structures.